Chip McAllister, but today we're talking about systems of linear equations. We have a system of two linear equations and two variables here in front of us. Let's first remind ourselves what is a two variable linear equation. For instance, this first equation in the system, 2x minus 4y equals negative 4. This is a linear equation with infinite solutions. A solution to this equation is a value for x and y that satisfy this equation. Here are a few examples of some solutions to this. 0, 1 is a solution. If I plug in a 0 in for x and a 1 in for y, it will solve this equation. Um, 2, 2 is a solution. And 4, 3 is a third solution. For instance, if I plug in a 4 for x, I get 8 minus 12. 8 minus 12 is equal to negative 4. So what then is a solution to the system of linear equations? Well, the solution to the system of linear equations is the solution that satisfies both of the equations. Both of these equations have infinite solutions, but they have one solution in common. For this system, the solution is x equals negative 2 and y equals 0. This is the only pairing of x and y that work in the first equation and the second equation. The question is, how do we find that solution? The first way we can find the solution is by graphing these equations. A graph, by definition, is a visual representation of all of the solutions. So the place where the two lines, the graphs of these linear equations, where they intersect, that is the one solution to both of the equations. Here we have the graphs of both of these two equations. In red, we have 2x minus 4y equals negative 4. And in blue, we have 3x plus y is negative 6. Because they are lines, it's obvious they can only intersect in one place. That one place they intersect right here at negative 2 comma 0, or x is negative 2 and y is 0, is the one solution that satisfies both of them. Again, remember as you're looking at this visual, both of these lines represent the infinite solutions to these equations. You'll see, for instance, for the red line, you'll see for 2x minus 4y equals negative 4, you see 0, 1, 2, 2, and uh, 4, 3. The second equation has infinite solutions, 2 represented by the graph, but the only solution that they both share is at negative 2 comma 0. One of the popular methods for solving a system of linear equations is using the substitution method. In this case, what we're going to do is solve one of these equations for one of the variables. In this case, what I'm going to do is take the second equation here, and I'm going to solve it for y. Then I'm going to substitute the equivalent expression to y into the first equation. This is what it's going to look like. I'm choosing to solve the second equation for y because the coefficient in front of the y is a 1. It makes it easy to solve for. In fact, all I need to do is subtract 3x from both sides of this equation, cancel out that x to get y equals negative 3x minus 6. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to substitute this expression, negative 3x minus 6, in for y in the other equation. All of the algebraic methods for solving systems or equations are ways of putting the information from both the equations together. In this case, what I'm doing is getting an expression that's equal to y. Again, this still is an equation that has an infinite number of solutions. But the second I inject this negative 3x minus 6 in for y to the first equation, I now have a one variable linear equation that I can easily solve for. So I'm going to now distribute this negative 4 through the parentheses and solve this equation for x. When I distribute the negative 4 through the parentheses, I get 2x plus 12x plus 24. A really common mistake that will frustrate you is forgetting a, that this is a negative that gets distributed through uh, the parentheses here. And also, make sure you always do distribution. You may understand distribution, but forget it in the middle of these steps. That negative 4 is multiplied by both of these terms here. Um, this equals negative 4. Combine like terms to get 14x plus 24 equals negative 4. Subtract 24 to both, from both sides to get negative 28 over here. Divide by 14 to get x equals negative 2. When I solve a system of linear equations using the substitution method, um, what I get is a value for one of the variables. The solution to a system of linear equations in two variables is always a value for each of the variables. Um, I now still need to do the work of finding the y value. One of the beautiful things about substitution method is once I have one of my variables, I can go back to the original equation that I had solved for, plug in negative 2 for x here, and this will give me y. What I get here is uh, 6 minus 6 to get y is 0, as we had showed previously. 
So far, we've talked about graphing as a way of solving linear equations, the substitution method, which is a really useful way of solving linear equations. The third method that we're going to use right now is the addition elimination method. In the addition and elimination method, we are now again going to try to put these two equations together, though in this case we're not going to isolate one of the variables. Instead what we're going to do is we're going to add sides of the equations together. When we add these two equations together, we will end up with the third true equation for this system. For instance, I can add these two equations together as they stand. 2x plus 3x is 5x. Negative 4y plus 1y is negative 3y. And negative 4 plus negative 6 is a negative 10. This would be a third true equation in this system, but that's not very useful. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to multiply one or both of these equations together so that the coefficients for one of these variables are opposites of each other. In this case, what I'm going to do is multiply the second equation by 4. The reason I'm multiplying the equation by 4 is I'm attacking the y's in this case. Multiplying this equation by 4, while it influences each of the terms, I'll get a plus 4y here, and you'll see why that's useful in one second. So all I've done here is multiply the second equation by 4. Now when I add these together, 2x plus 12x is 14x. Negative 4y plus 4y are 0y's, or just 0. I'm going to leave that blank. And then negative 4 plus negative 24 is negative 28. Um, I've actually seen this equation before. I'm going to divide 14 from both sides to get x equals negative 2. This method has two names for a reason. We are going to add the equations together. We're allowed to do that actually at any point, but it's only actually useful if we do some elimination when we do the addition. How we do the elimination is we think of values that we multiply one or two of the equations by in order to get the coefficients to be opposites. In this case, I chose to multiply this second equation by 4 to get this 4y right here. A positive 4y and a negative 4y will cancel each other out when I combine the terms and add the sides together. As always, I need to plug in my value for x into one of the first equations uh, to find the value of y. Here I've decided to plug the value of x equals negative 2 into the first equation. It doesn't matter which one I use. Um, when I do this and solve this for y, I get negative 4 minus 4y equals negative 4. I will add 4 to negative, or sorry, add 4 to both sides of the equation to cancel this out. What I get is negative 4y equals 0. Divide both sides by negative 4 to get y equals 0. To finalize the conversation, system of linear equations and two variables is a value for x and for y, or the two variables in your equations that satisfy both the equations. We can solve those by graphing, which can be painstaking at time and hard, especially if our answers are decimal or fractional answers. We have the substitution method, which really works great if it's easy to isolate one of the variables without having lots of fractions, or the addition and elimination method, with which I'm trying to add two of the equations together, though I might might need to do some work before to get opposite coefficients in one of the variables so they actually are eliminated when I add the two equations together. And don't forget, always, when we do these methods, we'll get one of the values. You always need to find the second value.